I was enjoying my life in Baltimore at the time. Um, I had a lot of friends, a lot of great friends. I had like a happy hour circuit. I was playing on volleyball teams. I liked my job. Um, I was being paid well at my job. Um, so on paper, everything looked really good. And a lot of it made me feel happy. Um, but I still had the sense that I had like muscles I wasn't flexing, that there was more that the world was asking me to do. Discernment is different for everyone, right? Um, but to me, I always think about discernment being uh, a process, a process of knowing ourselves and knowing who God wants us to be. The decision to go to South Sudan was a really big one. I spent a lot of time uh, talking to friends and my family. Those conversations were not easy. South Sudan is a hard pitch uh, to your mom. But, um, you know, they offered a lot of insight and questions that I hadn't thought to ask and uh, helped me think through it. And ultimately, um, I, I don't know if I would have been brave enough to make the choice to go if it hadn't been for their support and encouragement. I continued to like grapple with the decision that I made even after I had made the decision. Um, you know, after I packed up and moved to South Sudan, every single day I was asking myself, did I make the right choice or am I like way out of my league? Um, but then there were other days when I felt like I had successfully discerned the decision and I made it to South Sudan and I was in the right place at the right time. Um, I have a lot of experience working in NGOs, I have experience with leadership and mentoring teams and that's what they needed from me and I was able to provide it. I mean now I'm back and now you know following this like surge of like <laughs> spiritual momentum in South Sudan and um, leading up to it uh, the question is, what now? What are you going to do now? The world is still asking the questions like, what are you good at and what do you love? And, and so the challenge for me, and I, I think for all of us who are not living in a refugee camp, is like, how can we keep engaging with that invitation um, in our daily life? There's suffering everywhere. It's not necessarily as extreme as a South Sudanese refugee camp, but it's in the people we know, it's in the people we see when we're on the way to work, it's in our colleagues, it's in our own families, um, it's in our communities. Um, and so we're, we're in, I think we're invited to keep engaging with that.